Hi, good evening and welcome to the 314th meeting of the New York Comics and Picture Story Symposium. This is a weekly lecture series on comics, illustration, animation, and the history of text image work. This series is sponsored in part by the Will and Ann Eisner Family Foundation. And our guest tonight is Bharath Murthy. Uh, he's calling in from Bangalore, and he is a cartoonist and filmmaker. He works in publishing, film, and animation projects as a partner in Studio Iconte. He edits and publishes Verite, a comics magazine for, for adults, under the Comics India label. His first book-length comic, The Vanished Path, a graphic travelogue, was published in 2015 by Harper, HarperCollins India. He has also taught film direction at Film and Television Institute of India, uh, Pune. In 2017, he co-founded the Indie Comics Fest, the festival for self-published comics. His talk tonight is entitled Indian Comics, Trouble Growing Up. So take it away, Bharat. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ben, for the introduction. And uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, this is the first time I have this kind of uh, uh, an audience to speak to. So I'm very excited uh, to talk to you all. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take you through uh, a brief survey of Indian comics history as I see it. And I'm not an academic, uh, uh, but I, uh, of course, do have an interest in the history of Indian comics uh, as a practitioner. And uh, uh, so I have some views on it, uh, which I'll share with you as I uh, show it, as I go through the slides. So uh, let me begin with today. And what you see is um, today's newspaper, uh, uh, local newspaper, my local newspaper in Bangalore called uh, the Deccan Herald. And uh, this is what I see on the comics page. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, uh, the newspaper that I get every day. And this is what we see on the comics page, right? And you, there, are, there are no Indian comics, as you can see. There's Blondie, there's Hagar the Horrible, there's Peanuts, there's Beatty Bailey, and Marvin. <laughs> These are uh, all uh, American uh, comic strips. Uh, the only Indian cartoon in the newspaper is, uh, is the editorial cartoon uh, on the right, um, which uh, is commenting on the Nobel Prize for <coughs> uh, the recently uh, announced Nobel Prize. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I, the reason I'm showing you this is, is to uh, give you uh, an understanding that um, Indian comics are still at, at a stage where um, where we haven't been able to get rid of the American comics in our own newspapers, right? What we also see in Indian comics, as you look around, as you scan the um, scene, is uh, uh, magazines like Tinkle. Uh, this one is a recent issue of uh, Tinkle. It's a children's magazine. And uh, as far as I know, the only monthly children's magazine in India, which is, uh, which contains only comics, right? This is a comics magazine. Uh, it doesn't have any other uh, uh, text material. It has 
it has a few puzzles and things like that, some science material, but uh, but it's mainly comics. So this uh, Tinkle magazine has been around since nine, the 1980s, and uh, there's no competitor. Uh, the, the, this is the only children's comics magazine uh, for the whole country, right? This, um, I just assembled a bunch of uh, uh, covers uh, of graphic novels that have been published over the last, uh, say, uh, 15 years. And uh, what you see is, uh, what you get is a kind of a, a variety of styles. Um, uh, from uh, a kind of hyperrealism, uh, which is derived from uh, you know American comics like that Bangalore graphic novel, uh, which tried to kind of fuse science fiction with uh, Indian mythological motifs, which is a which is a uh, which is a long long running theme in in Indian comics. Uh, there's something like uh, to the left of it is Shaheen Bagh, a graphic recollection, which is recently released. Uh, this is a nonfiction uh, reportage uh, comic. In fact, it has a blurb from Joe Sacco. Uh, it's a reportage about the, uh, the protests against uh, the citizenship, citizenship Amendment Acts, which were passed uh, last year. And there was a massive uh, uh, people's protest, and this is a this is a comic about that about those protests, and they were largely led by women uh, in Delhi. Uh, there's um, stuff like Adi Parva, churning of the ocean, on the top right, uh, with the figure in blue, uh, uh, and, and and the lotus coming out of the navel. Uh, which is a, a mythological comic, but done in a sort of a modern uh, art, expressionistic art style. Right? Uh, it's uh, it's it's a story that uh, uh, it, it's an origin story from Hindu mythology, uh, which uh, uh, which has got a modern sort of retelling. Then you have something like a gangster story, like which is Mumbai Confidential, uh, set. Uh, it's a crime thriller set in Bombay. Um, so, and then you have something like Munu, a boy from Kashmir, which is which is directly inspired from uh, Art Spiegelman's uh, 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 work. And uh, mouse and mouse and Munu. So even the even the title of the of the comic is uh, pretty similar. And instead of instead of the, the mice and the cats in in Arch Peterson's work, it's uh, it's the deer. These are deer characters, and it's set in Kashmir, uh, which has uh, seen lots of uh, political violence and political instability. Uh, over the last many, many decades. Um, there is something, there's stuff like long form, which is a collection, it's anthology. That's the anthology form is another uh, 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 method or another way of uh, uh, publishing that has been popular uh, of late uh, because it allows uh, uh, different voices to be collected uh, in, in one volume. Um, another anthology magazine is recently released is Comic Sense, which is on the bottom right, uh, which is run by Orijit Sen, who is uh, considered uh, one of India's um, uh, early graphic novelists. So this is to give you a, a kind of a broad picture of the, of the kind of stuff that is that is being published in the graphic novel form. 
Uh, on the other hand, you also have very popular uh, imagery, uh, imagery that's drawn uh, to a great extent from uh, DC and Marvel, American superhero comics, uh, but with replaced with Indian themes. So <clears throat> you have this kind of uh, figuration, this kind of stylization in, in, in the depiction of uh, action. Uh, these are recent uh, releases, uh, a new company called Indus Words. And so they are trying to again fuse uh, uh, Indian mythological themes with contemporary uh, social issues, uh, which is always met, uh, uh, met with uh, mixed uh, success. In fact, they have they have actually not been so successful uh, in in India, but that doesn't keep people from trying new uh, ways to combine uh, Indian mythology uh, with contemporary. Uh, artistic expression. Uh, so far I've shown you uh, works in English, uh, but of course India has many languages and uh, <clears throat> these are a few uh, uh, comics uh, covers uh, from other languages. Uh, on the top left is, uh, uh, in, uh, is a Bengali comic. Um, <clears throat> Uh, which is uh, uh, a detective story um, written by Satyajit Ray. Satyajit Ray, of course, as all of you know, uh, uh, was a filmmaker uh, and graphic artist. And uh, he also wrote many short stories, which, which he then filmed himself, uh, which he made into movies. And Feluda is, um, uh, is his Sherlock Holmes-like uh, detective character, uh, which which was then made into comics. So, so that is on the top left, Feluda. Then there is Hindi comics, uh, Hindi superhero comics. Um, the most popular being uh, Nagraj. That is the second one next uh, on the top row. Uh, uh, then there are other assorted. Uh, superhero, crime thriller, uh, with again, mix of myth, Indian mythology uh, with modern themes, like the one in the bottom, which is another Bengali comic. You can see the, uh, the figure of uh, Kali, who is an uh, uh, Indian goddess, uh, 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 subduing this guy. That's on the bottom right in black and white. Uh, so you have this imagery of the goddess uh, and and gods, uh, Hindu gods, coming in again and again uh, in in new ways uh, in Indian comics. Uh, but you also have, uh, interestingly, uh, on the on the right corner, top right corner, uh, reprints of uh, European comics in Indian languages, and this is something quite uh, new and uh, recent. Uh, this is an example. It is a cover from a Bouncer, which is a, a comic uh, written by uh, uh, Alejandro uh, Jodorowsky right? uh, in French. Uh, and Book is the artist. Uh, but we have uh, re translations in Tamil. We don't have translations in other Indian languages or even in English official translations, but you have uh, you have them in Tamil. So uh, Tamil comics uh, have been, uh, or Tamil readers, readers of Tamil language. Uh, by the way, those of you who don't know uh, uh, where Tamil is spoken, it is in the deep south of India, uh, in a state called Tamil Nadu, uh, where the language is dominant. Uh, and it has a strong comics culture, uh, particularly of uh, European comics, for uh, uh, some strange reason <laughs> we, we don't know yet, uh, European comics have been quite popular uh, in that state, and so they have managed to uh, do these uh, quite good quality reprints of uh, of European works. 
uh, I just wanted to kind of go through uh, some key features of, of uh, Indian comics as I see them. Um, what we have is a, a, a situation where uh, you have comics artists, people like me uh, and others, doing um, short comics and uh, you know a graphic novel every now and then. Uh, but we don't have uh, monthly uh, or periodicals. We don't have comics periodicals, uh, except the one, the children's periodical that I showed you in the beginning called Tinkle. Uh, there are hardly any uh, comics magazines that are, that are periodical. So there are very few avenues for comics artists to actually get published. And as I already showed you, the Newspaper for, uh, newspapers uh, don't publish <laughs> Indian comic strips, even though there are many Indian comic strip artists. Uh, so that's that is a problem. Uh, then, of course, there is a teenage and young adult and uh, older readership. That is an adult readership uh, segment that is uh, not catered to. Most comics uh, uh, are. Uh, aimed at children, though that the teen, though the teenage audience is uh, off late being uh, being uh, uh, addressed by uh, by some new companies that have that have uh, emerged, like the ones I showed you before uh, called Indus Verse. Um, uh, Japanese manga has has come in in a big way uh, as, a, as a strong influence uh, recently uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, but before that, like even when I was a kid, I had no, uh, I had absolutely no exposure to Japanese comics. I didn't know Japanese comics existed even. Though we watched uh, a few Japanese anime on, on, uh, yeah, on Indian television, uh, but we had no idea of Japanese comics. And, in fact, for me personally, it was the exposure to, to Japanese comics that um, that gave me the ambition to start drawing comics myself. Uh, until then, uh, I, I love comics, but never got into drawing them. So that's that is something, uh, and I think that has an effect in in our um, in the way we look at comics in India. Uh, which is strongly influenced by uh, American um, uh, uh, expressions uh, or American American styles, uh, and even even the form of the of the comic, which is you know the thirty two page uh, uh, chapter color full color uh, comic books that are. Um, you know, in the in 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 the DC Marvel uh, sort of form, which is which is still popular, which is the which is the form in which uh, uh, many of the popular comics in India are still published. Uh, there is a political cartooning culture which is quite vibrant uh, in all Indian languages, uh, but I say that it's toothless <laughs> because. It's, uh, well, uh, uh, recently, over the last uh, two decades, uh, political cartooning has become more and more uh, um, wary of uh, of actually making strong satirical uh, critique, uh, and so it, it doesn't have the uh, intended effect. And so even the space that they given to it in newspapers has uh, shrunk uh, uh, massively. But you do have, you know, on, a, on the online space and on social media, you do have um, uh, a strong uh, political governing uh, culture, uh, which, is, which is censored, which is in fact censored very, uh, very often. And there are uh, constant controversies uh, uh, being uh, created because of uh, their expression. Yeah, I mean, um, in India, there's, there's been um, a sort of stifling of 
uh, of journalism uh, and reportage in general. So, it's, uh, uh, so the newspapers are wary of publishing cartoons, so they don't give enough space for political cartooning uh, uh, at all. Right? Uh, graphic novels uh, have emerged in the last kind of uh, about in the last 15 years, 15, 20 years, but it is very, um, uh, there are very few books and there are only a handful of, uh, of graphic novels are published every year. So it's, it is also not, um, not a, a, a form that is uh, actively encouraged uh, by uh, publishing companies. Uh, my own book, for instance, uh, you know, they printed about 5,000 copies, which is next to nothing right, for, for a big publisher. So it's a space that I have tried to, uh, it, it forced me to become a publisher myself uh, because it, there are hardly avenues to get published uh, in, in the graphic novel form. Uh, and it also, and it's a, it is the reason why I tried to start, along with other friends, a self-published comics festival called Indie Comics Fest, uh, which we've been running since 2017, uh, which in fact, we were quite surprised by the response we got. Uh, and the festival has been growing, uh, but of course, because of the pandemic, we haven't been able to uh, have uh, the festival for for two years running now, uh, but we hope to continue it. Yeah. The final point I wanted to make was the, the Indian animation and Indian comics have not supported each other um, over the years. So uh, that uh, has led to uh, Indian comics being uh, in its own uh, sphere and Indian animation doing something absolutely different. Uh, because the, uh, of the lack of synergy between comics and animation, uh, I think is one of the factors that is limiting its growth. Uh, yeah. So now, to before Indian comics, narrative illustration mainly took up uh, these kind of hagiographic or religious uh, themes or religious mythological themes or worse epics like the Ramayana and Mahabharata, which is you know one of the most popular uh, Hindu uh, religious epics in India, uh, and worse romances were being illustrated uh, in manuscript form. Uh, and sacred geographies like the Tibetan Buddhist tankas were being illustrated. So these are these are the forms that that uh, of narrative illustration that dominated up until the 19th century, uh, when political cartooning began uh, in earnest in India, and this is um, uh, what it was. If they were act, they were uh, <laughs> imitations of uh, the British Punch magazine, and as you know, Punch uh, the the Punch replicas all over the world. Uh, India is not an ex exception, and um, uh, so this on the left is our Punch. Our uh, was a state, uh, a kingdom uh, in the north of India, and. Uh, uh, so they published in the Urdu language. Uh, as you can you see, uh, no, they, you can't see the, the punch character, but they did make they did make an Indian version of the punch character as well. Uh, on the right, you see the Parsi punch. Uh, the Parsi is being a community uh, uh, originally for Persian. And that's how we get the word Parsi, uh, who uh, are today, you know, the top industrialists in India are from that community. Uh, the Parsis being mainly merchants and businessmen. Uh, so they started a Gujarati language 
uh, uh, punch magazine and you can see the punch character as well uh, but now dressed as a Parsi businessman. The Gujarati language is, uh, is dominant on the western side of India. Here you see um, another uh, satirical uh, uh, wiki, uh, Basantak, uh, and this is uh, this was published from Calcutta, which was the base of uh, the British Empire, and uh, uh, so the point I'm trying to make is the beginnings of political cartooning and 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 the critique of, uh, of uh, authority or speaking truth to power, these, these, uh, this kind of journalism began in these uh, imitations of the punch magazine. But on the right, you have uh, an interesting uh, connection with, uh, uh, with the US because a man by the name of Percy Windham uh, a British soldier. Uh, he fought uh, on in the Union side in the in the American Civil War. The soldier and, and adventurer who eventually ended up uh, coming to Calcutta and starting uh, uh, the Indian Charivari, which is the, the uh, another version of uh, uh, Punch uh, magazine and. Which, uh, what's interesting is uh, uh, the the artwork is quite uh, um, at least from the tower you can see the artwork is is uh, of a much higher quality uh, than the Avat punch, and you can see of course again the right in the beginning uh, the Indian uh, uh, god Ganesha. The god with the elephant head at the bottom, uh, with many hands holding the palette and the book and paintbrush, etc. As the Indian god Ganesha being the artist, so the god Ganesha is seen as the uh, the god of wisdom, and so he's also the scribe, and so um, that's the reason they have put him put that god uh, on the tower. Now, um, but that that has been a constant presence in Indian comics, so uh, it, it never goes away. So there's always somebody or the other uh, bringing in Indian mythology um, a, into uh, comics form, and that is there right in the beginning of Indian comics. So this is a kind of uh, uh, political cartoon that is published in Howard Punch. Uh, the language is Urdu. Uh, this, uh, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is a copy of a political cartoon that is published in the British Punch. Uh, but the copy is made by an Indian artist. So you have uh, 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 this kind of uh, reproduction or this quality of a reproduction. And here is uh, another cartoon that is um, from the same Howard Punch. Uh, what you can see uh, is uh, there you can see the Punch character uh, in Indian aristocratic clothing. Uh, but you have all these debauched uh, Indian Nawabs, uh, aristocrats. Uh, 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 addicted to opium, and this is an opium den in Lucknow. Of course, the opium is uh, East India Company opium. <laughs> That's, and it's, uh, it's at the height of the, of the colonial period that this, uh, this cartoon is being made. But this is an Indian cartoonist, an Indian artist who has done this work. It's not a, it's not a copy of uh, a British cartoon. Uh, jumping about 
uh, jumping to the post colonial period, um, 60, 70 years. This is after 1947 when India uh, finally uh, managed uh, to become uh, an independent country. Um, and uh, again, Sachin Ray uh, on the left, uh, the filmmaker who in fact started his career doing graphic art. And uh, that's what he was trained in. He was trained in painting. He, he studied painting. And this is a magazine called Sandesh, a children's magazine in Bengali, uh, published from Calcutta. And you can see uh, it, it's his cover design and uh, comic strip. Uh, this is from uh, the 1960s, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, in modernist Indian film directors, and there's one more example here, who is G. Arvindan, uh, a filmmaker from the South, uh, making films in Malayalam and this lang Malayalam language. And this is a comic strip uh, in Malayalam, uh, published in the 1960s, uh, which was, one could say, one of the first uh, uh, serious or adult uh, comic strips uh, telling, uh, focusing on uh, adult characters and on adult themes, where the characters even, uh, you know, aged uh, as the script progressed, uh, as, uh, as, as the strip progressed. So the strip is called Small Men, Big World. Um, and uh, uh, the focus is on uh, small town, uh, ordinary people. And we hadn't seen these kind of characters uh, being uh, represented uh, in, a, in a complete, in a story form, right? These, these, uh, so, so one could call this a proto graphic novel, uh, but published as a strip at first. Uh, so one of the early Indian graphic novels, we could say, is G. Arvindan, who, in fact, who became famous as a filmmaker, but this is how he started his uh, career as a comic artist. So there is some relationship between uh, modernist Indian cinema and, uh, and the Indian uh, uh, comic scene. So to reinforce that, here's, here is a Satyatre storyboard for his first feature film, Pate Panchali, which in fact ran in, was, you know, ran in New York uh, for more than a year. Uh, in fact, it is the New York audience which <laughs> popularized uh, the film in the 1950s. Uh, so he, um, in fact, did, he, he wrote a rough draft to the screenplay, but um, uh, as, but he made the film using these storyboards, and uh, this is what he showed his uh, producers when you we know, were looking for money to make the movie. Uh, done in black and white, um, uh, every shot uh, was uh, drawn uh, by him, and uh, the storyboards were recently published as, as a book as well, and they read pretty much uh, like a graphic novel. Uh, so uh, I would kind of include these storyboards uh, uh, as part of uh, Indian comics. Uh, and they're very well done uh, using uh, ink and wash uh, with a strong sense of light, uh, which of course, uh, Pate Panchali as a film is known for its uh, excellent cinematography, black and white cinematography uh, by Shubhato Mitra. Uh, and I think this black and white artwork uh, directly contributed to the style uh, of the film. Uh, another institution in the 1960s was a comics, uh, was a weekly magazine called Shankar's Weekly. And I told you that we don't have uh, uh, periodicals. This was the last periodical that 
it, that uh, that ran until 1975 when it shut down uh, in. Uh, during the political situation, which we call, which we uh, now call as an emergency, uh, that was uh, basically uh, draconian uh, laws were introduced in the in 1975, practically making uh, making the country a dictatorship for a, for a, for a few years, uh, and it was eventually lifted, and elections were called again. But that period. Uh, saw uh, the muzzling of the of the press, and uh, Shankar's Weekly was one of the uh, victims of that. And so, but since then, we have never had a weekly uh, political cartooning magazine like this. Uh, it, this was started in uh, just after independence in 1948, and it ran until 1975, uh, and it would contain. Uh, uh, large uh, uh, sort of editorial cartoon style uh, uh, pictures, uh, along with some text, uh, mostly satirical uh, articles, sort of like uh, like what Charlie Hebdo, uh, the French uh, uh, cartoon magazine, is sort of like that, and it was a weekly. And many um, of the cartoonists of my previous generation, uh, my parents' generation, uh, uh, started their careers in Shankar's Weekly. So I am. Uh, so I so I strongly uh, believe that you need these sort of these kind of uh, uh, print magazines in order to uh, sustain uh, a comics culture. Uh, I also wanted to. Uh, highlight one woman cartoonist, one of the few women cartoonists, I must say, uh, in 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 mainstream uh, cartooning, uh, who emerged in the 1980s, is Manjula Padmanabhan, who is also a novelist and a playwright. Uh, this is uh, one of her. So she. This is a strip that she did. She started in the 1980s. So this was a new kind of strip that. That uh, that showed a sort of a modern Indian woman um, uh, of the time, and uh, uh, a single woman trying to uh, urban woman, of course, uh, trying to make it in in this uh, urban Indian setting, uh, and trying to deal with uh, uh, issues related to. Uh, uh, women's lives. Uh, so this, so, so there were very few cartoonists doing that then, and she was one of the first. So I thought I, I thought I should include uh, an example. Uh, on the left here, uh, she's uh, talking to uh, a woman uh, who is fully veiled. On the right, she's trying to do yoga. Uh, so Manjula Padmanabhan uh, was also, um, she also did uh, uh, strips for this magazine called Target, uh, which, was a children's, which was a children's magazine. Um, and one, I must say, one of the, the, the best children's magazines that that post-independence uh, India could produce. Uh, uh, it had comic strips and illustrations of a very high standard and, uh, and uh, with a lot of diversity in, in styles. And uh, many ca uh, cartoonists and illustrators uh, of, again, of my parents' generation started their careers in this magazine. Which began in the early 1980s. Uh, it was started by an English woman, uh, a British woman named Rosalind Wilson, uh, who tragically died of cancer, uh, after which the magazine folded up. Uh, but many of us, uh, my, of my generation, this when I was a child when this magazine uh, started, and uh, 
this particular magazine was a huge influence uh, for uh, people of my generation. And I must say that I started cartooning by uh, uh, copying uh, artists from this magazine. Uh, so uh, I have fond memories of the, of the magazine. Uh, this is a kind of content. Uh, there's a character named Detective Moochwala. Moochwala in its Hindi word uh, meaning uh, uh, mustachioed as a the, man, the, the detective with a with the big uh, 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 mooch, right? The, the whiskers. And that's the central character here. So we have one page single page or double page comics, uh, short stories, but it had uh, styles which were not to be seen in any of the mainstream uh, comics. So here are two other examples. Uh, uh, this is a, a singing donkey character. Uh, and there used to be a page called Granny's Gupshap. Gupshap uh, in Hindi. It's a, so, uh, it's a Hindi word meaning uh, chit chat. Uh, so, one of the interesting things about this magazine was that it's an, it was an English magazine, but it included a lot of vernacular words uh, in, uh, 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 in its uh, content. So that is something that was something very new to us uh, at the time. And it was also the time when Salman Rushdie's uh, uh, novel, The Mid uh, Midnight's Children, came out. It came out in 1981. And Target as a magazine started at, in the same year, 1981. And uh, I think 1980, maybe I'm mistaken, but it's the same time. Um, and what we saw is, uh, you know, Rashti, Rashti's work was became very popular because of the use of this uh, Indian English uh, uh, in his work, the way he used uh, um, vernacular, Indian vernacular uh, uh, in uh, and melded it with uh, with the English language. And that was something new at the time, uh, but. A children's magazine like Target was doing that as well, uh, and uh, uh, it's still not fully uh, the, the the influence of this magazine is still not fully acknowledged. I think so. It's, it's, it's why I'm insisting <laughs> talking a lot about this. Uh, one more point on the, the comic on the right uh, uh, is shows this this woman, this character, who is his doctor. And this doctor's uh, character is modeled after the prime minister, Indira Gandhi, who's the, who was the first uh, female uh, prime minister, uh, first and only so far female prime minister of India. And uh, it's a satire on the prime minister, but it's in a children's magazine in the form of this little fable and of course, you also find this this judge character who is modeled after Lenin. Uh, you can; it's very clear. There is, a, uh, uh, it's uh, based on uh, Lenin. Uh, <laughs> face is designed uh, as a version of Lenin, and it's in these ways that uh, that uh, this children's mag this children's magazine operated. I mean, we didn't know that. Uh, that this was Lenin when we read it. <laughs> but certainly we could see uh, the Indira Gandhi connection very clearly. Uh, I, I was not supposed to show this, but then uh, it's still there. It's there. But it, so this was a cartoon published recently um, um, on Twitter. Which caused a huge uh, furor uh, because uh, it satirized uh, the chief minister uh, of the South Indian state, Tamil Nadu, um, and portrayed them naked. And uh, he, uh, he, I mean, he, he was uh, uh, the police, uh, the cops came, and then he 
he's taken to jail and this is a big uh, media uh, situation. So this this is the kind of cartooning that uh, political cartoon that does uh, rile up the, those in authority. So I just wanted to show this as an example of uh, political cartooning thing that actually works, but it's all pub it's published on Twitter and on Facebook, uh, not in uh, the mainstream newspapers. Uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, move away from the, uh, the comics uh, world and just focus a little bit on the on iconography to give you all an idea of uh, of the kind of uh, artwork we see in Indian comics. Uh, so, uh, so there is the Hindu god Rama, who's who is the, who is the protagonist of the epic Ramayana. Uh, the Hindu epic Ramayana, uh, which is from uh, you know the fourth century uh, BC, uh, B, uh, around the fourth century BC, uh, and has been depicted in art ever since. Uh, here is uh, from the sixth century. Uh, the, the figure on the right uh, is Rama, the the king. The exiled king who has to then win back, uh, uh, who has to win back his wife who's been abducted by the de by this demon, uh, and so he wages war on the demon and then uh, uh, wins his wife back. That's the gist of the story. Uh, he is exiled from his kingdom, uh, so uh, he has to go on this. Uh, he wander he wanders along along with his brother for fourteen years. So. You, so this is the kind of iconography of the god uh, Rama, right? Uh, that's from the sixth century sculpture. Uh, it morphs into uh, this kind of a figure in by the 1600s when uh, uh, the Islamic empires have uh, the sultanates have become. Uh, the main uh, uh, the power in in the in the north, and uh, so, and Islam has entered as a as a, as a religious, political, and social uh, uh, entity uh, in in the subcontinent. Then you see a certain transformation of the figure of the, of Rama on the right, and you can see him killing the demon. Uh, uh, on the left as well. In the 19th century, the figure morphs into a, 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 into a realistic uh, image. And this is a huge revolution in Indian art. And from this point onwards, everything changes. These are these are two uh, paintings by Raja Ravi Verma. Uh, sorry, I haven't put the, the names on the screen. Raja Ravi Verma uh, was a painter from the south of India, uh, who uh, was essentially a society painter uh, uh, and painted portraits of aristocrats. Uh, but uh, his most popular works were uh, uh, mythological paintings or narrative paintings and he is the first artist who um, got rid of the old uh, visual conventions that existed up until then and started basing his uh, images on uh, European style realism and this combination of Hindu mythology being depicted uh, uh, through European realism and through the conventions of theater, of drama, the lighting, etc., and the placement of the figures, the uh, posture, uh, uh, all all taken from theater and, and European style realism. So this combination uh, fundamentally altered uh, people's. Uh, 
the whole country's perception of what the gods and goddesses should look like. And in fact, goddesses were uh, depicted uh, without any uh, 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 clothing on, you know, their breasts weren't covered, right? The, the only clothing they had was to cover the crotch, right? Uh, but uh, from this point onwards, all the goddesses started getting uh, covered up. Uh, being the Victorian period, the high noon of British uh, colonialism, uh, uh, and this kind of imagery started getting used by uh, the anti-colonial movement. And you will see why I, I, I'm showing you this because it has a bearing on the way comics are drawn in India. So there you go. Um, uh, this is Amar Chitrakata, one of the most influential uh, comics companies uh, 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 in, in India in the post-independence period from the 1960s onwards. Uh, so they were the first to create comics based on Indian mythology. And here's again the figure of the god Rama, which is, which is uh, explicitly based on the paintings by Raja Ravi Yogma, uh, which we saw earlier. And, uh, and ever since then, this is the figure that is used in comics or versions of this, this kind of imagery. Uh, has been used uh, in comics. So, we, so, so the old, the older visual conventions are now completely forgotten. It's now realism uh, uh, combined with us um, uh, with the conventions of uh, American and British comics uh, that we get uh, this imagery. You can see some more examples of that over here. This is the god Rama on the left, the blue skinned person lifting the bow. Uh, on the other hand, you also have Indian modernist artists uh, of the post independence period trying out other versions of depicting mythology, trying to recover, in fact, the old traditions that were, that were uh, 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 apparently forgotten. And so you have an artist like M.F. Hussain, uh, whose uh, Muslim identity becomes a problem uh, in, in the right-wing uh, right politics uh, of our time later, but, in the 1960s, he did, uh, he did a series of uh, uh, pictures dealing with Hindu mythology. And here is the god Rama on the right, uh, faceless. <clears throat> uh, and the monkey god Hanuman, who is, which is the big picture uh, in the background. Uh, his wife Sita is next to him. Uh, he, that is the wife that he has to get back uh, you know, after fighting with the demon. Uh, so this is sort of imagery that, uh, that announces a sort of a parallel tradition in, uh, in uh, Indian iconography, and that is reflected in comics as well uh, later, which I'll show you. Uh, so in the 90s, uh, you can see that the god drama has now morphed into uh, uh, an animation character, finally. Uh, this is the first uh, animation feature film uh, in India, but, but it's not made by Indians, ironically, uh, though it was supposed to be made as a joint venture between Japanese, the Japanese and Indians. Uh, uh, but it was eventually made by the Japanese, the Indians had to pull out. <clears throat> and uh, what is uh, what's interesting is that the, you you can link this site sort of imagery directly with the kind of uh, uh, 
iconography that Ravi Verma uh, initiated in the 19th century. And this is from the year 1992, which is also a crucial year uh, in Indian politics uh, because that was a year when a mosque was demolished by right wing supporters uh, uh, who uh, claimed that the birthplace of this god uh, was built, uh, was originally uh, in, 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 in the place of that mosque. So they had to demolish the mosque and rebuild the birthplace of that uh, of the god Rama. And they wanted to make a, a temple like this at the, at the site of the mosque. So the mosque was demolished and it was a very, very popular, populist, popular uh, right-wing uprising, uh, a counter-revolution, you might say, uh, which essentially depended on the imagery of the god Rama, uh, which you see here, uh, which links back to Raja Ravi Verma's realistic depictions of the Hindu gods. And the end point of that, of that process is in um, political iconography. So you have some counter uh, uh, versions as well, um, uh, influenced by American comics. Again, you have the Hindu god Rama, but now portrayed as a sort of a superhero uh, in a quasi fantasy, science fiction, fantasy universe. This, uh, I, I must give you a little bit of uh, background to this, this particular comic. It was a strange kind of collaboration between Richard Branson of Virgin, uh, the, the, the big, uh, yeah, you know, uh, the industrialist, uh, uh, businessman, the British industrialist Richard Branson, and uh, Indian um, Indian uh, film director Shekhar Kapoor, who at that time was uh, quite a popular you know, Indian film director, and so they and he, they roped in, or rather Deepak Chopra, the uh, spiritual American Indian American spiritual guru uh, in Hollywood. Uh, in the early 90s and, and, and the early 2000s. He was quite popular in Hollywood. Uh, I suppose he still is uh, among a certain kind of celebrity. I mean, they came together to start a comics company in India based in Bangalore, where I am. And the, their, their project was to create new versions of Hindu mythological characters, which they could sell to Hollywood. Uh, to be made into uh, franchise films uh, in the manner that, say, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings is being made, or you know, any of these other popular science fiction and fantasy franchises. So they thought Hindu mythology is so popular. Why don't we make them into comics? Why don't we reject them into a, into a secularize them, as it were, into into fantasy? Uh, and uh, and then sell them to Hollywood, but it was a massive disaster. And nobody liked it, <laughs> and and the company folded up. The Indians, even the Indians, didn't read these comics. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's a good art historical um, question or investigation that can be done as to why uh, this uh, this uh, failed this kind of approach failed. So the, the failure to secularize uh, religious mythology. You have another version of that with uh, Grant, Mor Grant Morrison, all of you, as all of you know, is the uh, uh, Scottish, I suppose, uh, uh, comic writer, very, very, very famous for writing The Invisibles uh, and Do Petrol, etc. Uh, he collaborated with an Indian artist named Mukesh Singh uh, in for, a, a, again, a fantasy, quasi-fantasy science fiction version 
of the Mahabharata, which is the other big great Indian epic. And uh, so you can see the kind of iconography that uh, they have developed, mixing all kinds of influences. Again, uh, has no impact in India. No, <laughs> nobody, even though it, uh, it has all these big names, uh, the artist Mukesh Singh is very, very popular, uh, well-known uh, uh, Indian illustrator. Uh, and you can see that a lot of work has gone into this, producing this kind of imagery. But it must be said that it, uh, it, it hasn't really worked. Uh, it's not popular. Uh, it's not that the Indian movie studios are lining up, you know, to create an animated uh, film or uh, using this sort of imagery. No, none of that, none of that has happened. Uh, at least not as yet. Um, but my own feeling is that uh, it, uh, it, this kind of approach is unlikely to succeed in India, uh, given that religious um, uh, mythology is a very, very strong living tradition uh, in, in India. It's, it's still alive. It's not, it's not heritage, it's not something that is, that's dead and that's being revived, but it's very much alive. Um, so uh, uh, it's very hard to tinker with uh, uh, religious mythology, except in the way that Ravi Verma did it uh, by humanizing the gods. And that is the kind of imagery that has, that works uh, in the popular mode. Uh, if you try to secularize, Religious imagery, it doesn't work. That's the, the model of the story, if you wish. Um, so here is an uh, examples of the current sort of uh, iconography that is that is popular in India. You can see this either the Hindu god Hanuman. Uh, so this particular kind of version of the of the god uh, is very very popular these days uh, in India, and you find them. On bumpers as bumper stickers and on and on on vehicles everywhere, um, and this imagery, as you can see, is influenced by um, uh, that sort of secularizing uh, fantasy style uh, imagery derived from you know American comics, mainly American and European comics, mainly, uh, but keeping the religious uh, intent. Uh, in that uh, here over here, you know, so the, the, it's popular because not treated as uh, uh, as a secular figure, but very much as the god. So the stickers are there because it's the sticker of the god, and so there's there is the the sacred uh, idea that is still attached to this to this kind of imagery. Uh, if you remove that, uh, it's unlikely to succeed, even if the iconography is the same. Uh, uh, which is this is my view. Um, do we have uh, Ben? We have some more time. We have a few more minutes. Can I continue? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. I'll take uh, maybe ten more minutes. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, there is another kind of modern mythology that has evolved in uh, post-independence India, uh, which is exemplified by the figure of this of the common man. Uh, it's a character that was created by an, a cartoonist named R.K. Lakshman, who in his lifetime was pretty much the number one or the most famous or most well-known cartoonist, uh, political cartoonist in India. Uh, and he did a, he did a, 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 a column, a single panel strip called You Said It, which uh, uh, for many decades was a very, very popular uh, 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 comic strip. And in, in that strip, he introduced this character called, which everybody started calling the common man and he himself uh, popularized the idea of this figure being called the common man. He has no name, uh, which is why, because he's the common man. And uh, he doesn't, he apparently doesn't speak. 
but he's always around uh, 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 he's always around in the strip he, he's the, uh, he uh, according to the cartoonist represents the silent majority uh, of india uh, always a uh, 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 with an ironic smile uh, one could say uh, watching uh, events unfold in front of him uh, with irony so uh, this character became quite popular recently i did a sort of a, i did a comic which is um, a critique of a critique of the of this character uh, i did it for a magazine a name indian quarterly a literary magazine um uh, where i tr i tried to trace uh, the origins of this myth of the common man which i call a myth and uh, which i tried to explain uh, as a sort of a secular mythology as a counter to the religious mythology of the that is used by the political right but at the same time uh, the um, seeing the transformation of this so called uh, of the secular uh, figure into a uh, a uh, a fascist right uh, the common man becoming uh, uh, the exemplar of the fascist man of a fascist person uh, in the current right wing uh, atmosphere of india so um, that was so this is the last page of the comic uh, so i just put the first and last pages just to give you an example of my own comics work recent comics work uh the last five minutes i'm going to, i'm going to show you uh the other trend which i already introduced uh when i showed you the artist mf hussain who had whose iconography of rama in in modernist art was trying to recover uh, or hark back to the older indian traditions uh, before the coming of uh, you know european realism uh, into indian into the indian art world um, uh, so here is a comic called bhimayana on the left uh, which uses uh, which is in fact a bio a biography of uh, one of the uh, most important uh, 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 political thinkers and politicians uh, in in india uh, his name is b r ambedkar um, who uh, in fact studied in columbia university <laughs> he is an he is an alumnus of columbia university <laughs> in new york and it's where he got his politics from uh, and uh, a, a lifelong uh, republican uh, In the Indian, in the Indian context, uh, and uh, uh, a champion of the cause of the rights of the oppressed classes, oppressed classes and the oppressed caste. So he himself came from uh, from the from the oppressed caste, uh, uh, which is now collectively uh, called Dalit, uh, and so this biography. the he uses the art style uh, of the gone tribes this go the gone tribe is from central india and uh, you can see on the right there is some wall art of the gone tribe so the publisher wrote a script <clears throat> and got these artists to do uh, the you know uh, artwork for the for the script Uh, in the in that style, and they had of course never done comics before. <clears throat> so they, so they created a kind of a of of a uh, a hybrid between their style and uh, the comics form, and it's a, it was a kind of experiment in Indian comics. And you and you'll find many more such. Uh, I'll show you a couple of more examples. Uh, you'll find many such experiments, which I am quite critical of. since uh, uh i see it as a sort of exploitation of uh uh tribal and other folk forms uh and you know trying to force fit 
uh, these forms into uh, into uh, comics medium uh, without the by, by just hiring artists right because the artists didn't do it by themselves it's not their own expression but they have been hired by the publisher so so there is a kind of a commerce of art styles going on here and this is one example here is another uh, on the left it's biography of Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, um, it's, uh, it involves foreign uh, American uh, writers and, uh, and uh, American writers, but it's illustrated by uh, uh, an Indian uh, folk artist, which is the style on the right, which is the Pat Chitra, which is called particular in, in, in Indian languages. Uh, it's uh, popular uh, prints, uh, popular art from the 19th century, uh, from 19th century Bengal, Bihar, Bengal, that region, Eastern India. Uh, and this popular art style is adapted into to tell this you know, by to depict the biography of uh, Martin Luther King. So it's a similar strategy as the as the earlier comic. Uh, so it's published by Tara Books, which is which is a very well known uh, children's book publisher, uh, winner of many award, international awards at book fairs. Uh, but this is a kind of a mixing of art styles that that I was talking about, and that is trying to um, uh, recover older uh, and other traditions of Indian art uh, via the comics medium. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of project that is fought with contradictions, uh, I must say. Um, but, but this is something that is that exists, and it they see themselves as a counter to the popular art styles that I showed you earlier. Here's another example of, of tribal art being used in Indian, uh, in, in advertising, for instance, in Indian popular culture, urban popular culture. Uh, on the left, you see, uh, uh, this is the Warli tribe. This is in Maharashtra, this again, uh, around Central India, and and that's wall art again, but the wall art uh, style is is uh, is adapted uh, to a Coca Cola ad, which is uh, uh, which is created to celebrate a Hindu festival called Diwali, a festival of light, a Hindu religious festival called Diwali, but uh, tribal art is used for by Coca-Cola. So there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, ideological uh, mishmash over here. Uh, here's another, yet another example. Uh, a comic uh, called Lai, a traditional tale of modern India, using Rajasthani uh, manuscript painting styles. On the right, you see an example of, of what I'm talking about. It's uh, a Mewar is a region in Rajasthan. This is again, Northern India, but Northwest, uh, more uh, desert, uh, a region that is a, uh, that is kind of desertified and uh, uh, has an arid climate. Uh, so Rajasthan. So that uh, this is manuscript painting, religious paint, religious uh, narrative, uh, but manuscript painting. And you see the say you see the style adapted to try and tell a story of uh, modern. Uh, Indian politics. Uh, and I must say, again, the result is mixed. It's an experiment, but uh, 
which I think doesn't really succeed. Uh, you can also, see, for instance, even the red border, the, the red color is a very strong, uh, 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 a strong part of that uh, style of painting, which is again used in the book. Wow. Well, Sorry, this is again. These are these are the examples of other art styles being used in comics, which I didn't really want to get into. So I'm just going to show them to you. Finally, I wanted to show you my own work, which is on the right, you have the magazine that I publish called Ready Day. And this is the book on the left, The Vanished Path. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, this, this final is the final slide. Uh, just summarizing the, what I was talking about earlier. It's what I think we need. Uh, we need more weekly and monthly uh, comics magazines. We need periodicals to, to uh, as the foundation to build a comics culture. Uh, and you need comic strips in the newspapers, Indian comic strips in newspapers. Uh, and we need more foreign comics published in Indian editions more graduate level courses in comics and more cooperation in general. So um, yeah, so these are my thoughts on Indian comics as they are today. That's great. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If you if you have um, a question for Bharat, you can drop your name in the chat and unmute yourself. Um, so, so where do you see the the, whole, the tradition of picture recitation in this? I mean, the non the pre-print traditions, you know, the uh, the Bengali, uh, the Patu. Right, yeah. the, 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 the oral storytelling. You, you mean? Yeah. Well, the tradition of just oral recitation is that well, it, something it, young it cartoonists? Exists. It, it exists, but. Uh, uh, but I see it as a as practically dead. I mean, it exists as a sort of a revival of sorts, uh, you know, as heritage, as uh, uh, as a museum piece. But uh, but as a living tradition, uh, I, I I don't think it has any. It, well, there they, there are performances for sure. I mean, the Ramayana and Mahabharata. For instance, are still performed by uh, by singers, by performers who move from village to village and from town to town, and they they organize. So that that is a kind of a, a religious, uh, you could call it a religious ritual, a ceremony uh, as well. So it has that religious uh, connotation, which is there. I mean, but they don't use they don't use pictures. Uh, uh, so often, it, it, it's very, very um, uh, reduced. So the performance itself has, has actually transformed quite a bit uh, to cater to a more modern sensibility, shall we say, you know, the use of, um, simply by the use of, of modern uh, sound e equipment, you know, they carry sound equipment, they have their mics and speakers and and all that, so it's it's already it's already transformed uh, in many ways. Right. Yeah. Now that same tradition that ended up, you know, in Europe, the the picture recital, that's a big influence on young cartoonists in the U.S. They do a lot of performance comics and performance. So I mean, that's it's right. not. It may not be 
directly derived from uh, India. Some people think it is, but me, I don't know. Ah, but, uh, okay. Some some historians think there's a direct connection to the European versions. Other people think it just arose independently. But anyway, um, oh yeah, what do you think about the world comics? The the thing that uh, Sharad Sharma, Sharma. 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 his project. That's uh, maybe you could just explain yeah. what it is to people who don't. Know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, World Comics is um, is a project that uh, that is run by Sharad, a man named Sharad Sharma, uh, who's based in uh, Delhi, um, the capital, uh, and uh, uh, he uh, he does it as part of an NGO. So it's a sort of activism, comics being used as an activist, uh, as a form of activism, where he goes and, uh, and, and teaches children uh, and young people how to draw a simple uh, strip. And then they do these strips and they talk about issues that are uh, related to their own lives and uh, and then it's like you know it, it printed out in cheap uh, photocopies and then put up on the market square and so there's some discussion so so trying to engage the community in uh, in this form of uh, 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 this form of storytelling uh, I my own view is that uh, uh, of course uh, he, he's doing he's doing a great job he's doing is uh, using the form in a certain way, but uh, it, uh, but it ends up being only a sort of a, an event. Uh, you go and you do that, and it ends there. Uh, it's not; it doesn't become an independent uh, activity. Uh, at least not. Uh, at least I don't know of any any instance where. Uh, the children and young people have take, taken up the form and then built on it. So it's a sort of a top-down approach, uh, trying to, you know, it's kind of a patronizing approach, which I I, I don't endorse personally. Uh, you say, okay, I'm gonna uh, let's make comics, and then we go ahead and we make some comics, and then and then we put it, you know, put it up on the walls, and then people say things about it and they read it, and so on. Right. And, and you go to the next place and, and make some more comments. It doesn't really take root, you see. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, if that doesn't happen, then you don't have a culture. It, it's not a real thing. It has to emerge from the grassroots. <laughs> you cannot go there and then say, I'm doing grassroots comics. It's a, it's a problematic thing. Um, the way I see it, yeah. yeah there's, uh, there's a question. I think that answers David Berger's question. This is done in small villages, right? Uh, he yeah, asked, it's done. It's done in rural areas, yeah. uh, and also uh, uh, like the among the urban poor. So uh, you have you have these uh, uh, shanty towns and slums in in urban areas. So it's done there as well. Uh, and on paper, it all sounds great. I mean, it looks good. They, they even do very interesting comics, right? right? Uh, this, they end up saying things that are generally not said. Uh, all kinds of repressed subject matter comes in. But at the end of the and then he, and then, you know, they collect it and publish it in book form, and it's available in New York in a bookstore, and it's all nice. <laughs> but, uh, but, it ends there. There's no comics culture being created after that by the participants themselves. You know, they don't pick it up and they don't pick, you know, it's not, yeah. it doesn't become a regular form of expression. At least not that I know. So, right. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a question from ACJC. Did you want to ask that in person? Well, you can see that in the chat, a question about uh, oh. in these comics moving online. Did you have much to say about Hi, that? Hi, uh, this is oh. Cleo. 
Hi. Uh, so I've asked the question. So my question is, uh, because we have seen a lot of printed publications so far, um, is there any recent online platforms that is coming up that could potentially transform the landscapes of Indian indie comics publishing? Thank you. Well, uh, on, uh, it's there on social media. Um, there is no single platform that is that is uh, that is popular. Uh, some comics companies have their own apps on the phone, and uh, and they put up their print works and some exclusive online mobile content uh, on these apps. Um, but uh, there, there's strips on Instagram, uh, and they're very popular. Uh, uh, in fact, recently there was uh, an artist who, uh, who criticized the current government on Instagram, a young lady, and uh, she's very popular on Instagram among young people. And uh, she was, uh, you know, asked to come, you know, she was served the court notice and uh, she was asked to explain her uh, her position. Um, I think she, I think she had to go to the police station and it, it, so, there, so there was an attempt at censorship uh, of that uh, of that strip and the strip is still there. It's not it's called sanitary panels. Uh, it's there on Instagram if you want to check it out. Uh, uh, so. So these are these are uh, alternative spaces that have emerged uh, because of social media. But my uh, rejoinder to that would be uh, just like how the Arab revolutions uh, failed, despite Facebook and Twitter being uh, used uh, to organize those revolutions. Uh, the social media has limited impact, uh, and I think mobile phones as well have limited impact. There is uh, very little penetration of smartphones, for instance, uh, among uh, in the Indian population. Most Indians still use um, very, very basic uh, mobile phones, and so it's, of course, smartphones penetration is, is increasing by the day, uh, and you might find interesting stuff happening. But I, again, I would say, I would use the example of the Arabs, Arab revolutions, <laughs> say that social media has limited impact. It has to be in print. I, 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 I'm biased towards that. Okay. Uh, CT had a, CT Lim had a question early on. Did you want to mm -hmm. ask that? Yeah, hi, thanks, Ben. Uh, my question is, um, it's interesting to note that manga has not taken root uh, in India as much. I think you have pointed out that. And, and DC and Marvel continues to uh, dominate. So is there a reason why, despite uh, you know, the global influence of manga, he has not uh, influenced Indian comics as much? Uh... Although I must I must add that the, the among very very young people say the teenagers today yeah Indian teenagers today urban Indian teenagers today there is a very strong uh, influence of manga and they do read uh, uh, and watch uh, read manga and watch anime in fact it's it's more strongly anime watching anime um, but uh, the uh, it, it, overall the American presence, uh, cultural presence is extremely strong in, in India. Uh, and I suppose it has historical reasons for it. Uh, also, uh, the language, even though, of course, manga is translated, you have translations online, so people can read them. But uh, the, the, the pressure, the influence of American popular culture via Netflix, via Hollywood, is is just so huge uh, that uh, it, it basically <laughs> flattens out everything else. <laughs> it's unbelievably huge. Yeah, the influence is too strong. Despite the Jap despite uh, uh, you know the amount of uh, Japanese manga that is produced, you know they, they produce the most comics, and it's it's 
available to read. People love them. Indians read them. But they don't, they all read them in, in scanlation. Uh, they read them online uh, in pirated versions or scan, uh, you know, uh, translations uh, into English. And, uh, and, and so they don't, they don't get the books. The books are not available in, in the Indian market. There are no Indian editions of uh, Japanese comics available. What we get are American rejects or, you know, from the American market. So these books are made for the US market and then they, and they all come into Indian bookstores, you know, after they, they, they essentially rejected or, or unsold, unsold copies. Uh, so there is no effort from the Japanese side as well to um, uh, to uh, invest in the Indian Indian market. So they know that the Indians, a lot of Indians, will read them, and it's a it's a it's a huge market. But as of now, there's no presence of Japanese publishers in, even uh, in in the Indian scene. I mean, they could set up offices and, and publish Indian edition. edition. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be happening. Yeah. Hmm. On the other hand, you you have uh, because of the of Netflix, because of uh, Hollywood, you have I mean you have uh, you have direct access to American popular culture, uh, you know cutting edge American popular culture, shall we say? So you know the latest releases are available, uh, ready to access. And all their forms on on Netflix. And Netflix is very cheap in India. Um, people can pay that rental and, and watch them. So America remains popular. So <laughs> American hegemony, cultural hegemony in South Asia is they are going strong. <laughs> Don't need to worry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, were there any um any tradition of photo novellas in India? A comic strips uh, made out of photographs? Yes, actually, I should have included one or two of those. Uh, they, they, uh, the, the photos, uh, so they're the photo comics, but made out of uh, uh, Hindi uh, uh, popular films, popular cinema, like Bollywood. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so Indian uh, Hindi language. Uh, popular movies were being converted into photo comics uh, in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, I have a whole collection of them. Uh, I should have actually included uh, one or two of those. Uh, but yeah, the, it, it was there for a short period, no longer. I mean, right. it's not there anymore. And how, yeah. how, how long did they, uh, those Indian punch magazines last do you know they how were, long they yeah. ran yeah so the last uh, indian punch magazine i think died out by the 1930s okay 1930s uh, that were the you know uh, huge transfer of social and political transformation in the in the indian scene during that period and uh, also lots of repression by the uh, the political anti-colonial movements were growing, and that there was political repression, and so these magazines also, you know, somehow didn't survive. Uh, right. They were repressed to a large extent. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, more of a comment here is uh, in your final slide. You talk about how there should be more collaborations within South Asia. I would like to say that maybe you can think of uh, collaborations between South Asia and Southeast Asia as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Southeast Asia, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I wanted to say the nations of the South <laughs> in general. I think there should be, there should be greater collaboration. You know, at, on a personal level, we, you know, people say I've had interactions or inquiries from cartoonists in and comics artists in Brazil and Philippines. Uh, just inquiring, I mean, having a kind of a dialogue like this. Uh, all that has happened, but it's not, it's not uh, yet become concrete. 
However, there has been uh, a sort of a collaboration in some cases where Indian writers or self-published artists have been collaborating with, uh, say, Indonesian or Filipino artists uh, and bringing out their own uh, uh, magazines. It's the, they are DC Marvel style, like uh, short chapters, 32, 30 pages about, uh, and uh, um, popular, popular uh, genres like you know, crime or horror uh, and action. Uh, but yes, there have been a few collaborations with, uh, with but, they are, but they are all on an individual level where the artist is the writer and the publisher and he or she like, uh, you know, gets, gets a, a Filipino artist or somebody to do the artwork. So those kind of collaborations have happened. But I think at a, at a, at a larger uh, editorial vision uh, level, I think there should be greater collaboration between the countries in South, Southeast Asia for sure. Yeah. Like for instance, I have no, uh, I have no clue what's going on in Pakistan. So, but I am very interested <laughs> to link up with uh, with artists in Pakistan. But a, there, there's no connection. There's very very little connection. Hmm. Okay, thank you. That was fascinating. Thank you. Okay. Any if there's anyone else, I don't. Uh... Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sort of wondering uh, at one of these uh, comics, com comic festivals in India, if uh, if uh, the do-it-yourself comics and zines and stuff from the U.S., do you think they'd be very popular there? For sure. Yeah, I mean. Uh... There have been, so in our own festival that we run, Indie Comics Fest, there have been um, some uh, artists who got a few uh, American comics uh, and displayed them and you know, uh, tried to get uh, readers to engage with them. And uh, they have always been uh, successful. People are always interested. Um, so I think the in American independent comics would would be would be uh, welcome and and definitely there there would be interest. I'm certain of that. There is interest in American independent comics. And with the current political situation, might it be hard getting material like that through customs? I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's not it's not that uh, that much of a, there, there there's no censorship at that level. You can you can always import material. Well, I have imported uh, stuff from Japan, which would be considered completely <laughs> completely uh, uh, well obscene uh, in the Indian context. But I've managed to import. So I mean, you can get stuff in. Uh, and you can even distribute them, which should not be a problem at all. Uh, the censorship comes at uh, in, in other ways, you know. It, it comes as a, as harassment later if they feel that it is getting popular on social media. Social media is is heavily uh, surveyed in in India, so. So uh, Twitter and Facebook, they work very closely in cooperation with the Indian government uh, and, uh, and, and, and they do the line. So uh, yeah, Facebook is, <laughs> is the Indian government for <laughs> as far, the way I see it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But if it's on print, it's very, it's hard. In fact, print for me, uh, I, I always come back to print because Actually, print is harder to control. It's it's much harder to control print. Uh, you can actually distribute all kinds of content. I have myself made all kinds of content which is not really appropriate for yeah uh, for the general public. And if I would you know 
but I have managed to uh, distribute them and yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, many specialty stores in, in your part of India for comics? For comics, uh, no. <laughs> I would love I would love to open a store myself, here, I think. But yeah, but uh, uh, no, there uh, there there have been attempts, like say in Bombay, uh, to open a comic store, but that soon became a comic store, come cafe, and then it became a cafe which also has comics, and now it's only a, a cafe that has it's comic themed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they do have a library. It's called Leaping Windows. Uh, they do have a library of comics, um, but it's okay. I mean, they can't do business with just comics, and they have to. Okay, well, they, it's it's a restaurant now, so um, yeah, that's very hard to have specialists. Though one can always try, and one can do things to make that happen. It, the Japanese tried it. The Japanese they had a manga. Uh, store in, in, in Delhi for a while. And that was an interesting experiment that didn't last long. In fact, I bought a lot of their, their books, which they left over when they closed down. Okay. Anyone else? Um, uh, okay. Thank you. That was a great, fascinating talk. And uh, thank you again. Have a good day. It's morning for you, right? Have a good morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks a lot. And good night Sunday. to everyone yeah. in, the, in the darkened parts of the earth. Yeah, yeah. the sun is just rising here. Okay, take care. All right, uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, thank thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.